This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. How many times have you been hanging out with someone and they've told you that they want to show you a photo, only for them to get the phone out of their pockets, open the photos app, and then spend way too long scrolling through thousands of photos while you stand there feeling, well, awkward. I'm guessing this has happened to all of us at least a few times. And I think the reason for that is that people don't really know how to use the photos app on their iPhones. Which is weird because we all use it probably every day. It's extremely capable, but it's actually quite overcomplicated. So in this video, I'm going to be explaining the Photos app from top to bottom, sharing best practices with you for accessing and managing your photos so that you can hopefully avoid any awkward moments for yourself. Stick with me until the end of the video. I reckon this app has still got a few tricks up its sleeve that most people won't have been aware of. Okay, let's get into it. Let's start with the absolute basics of navigating your way around the app. When you open it up, you'll be greeted by your photos and some buttons. Down at the very bottom, you've got your library, a section called For You, a section called Albums, and a search option. We're gonna cover each of these in more detail in just a moment. By default, you navigate to your library, and this is kind of like the shoebox under your bed where you've chucked all of your printed photos, albeit with a bit of organization going on. The photos are at least sorted in date order. Oldest photos are at the top, newest are down here at the bottom. All photos is precisely what it sounds like. Quick tip for you, if you ever swipe all the way to the top of this, i.e. your oldest photos, and you want to quickly get back to your newest photos, rather than swiping all the way back down, just tap the library button again, and your app will instantly wash you back. Notice the date range up at the top of the screen. This is showing you the range of the visible photos. If you tap on days, the app will then zoom in to a view where it bunches photos together into more specific date periods. Tap on months, and you can view all photos taken in a specific month. Tap on years to do this for years. Back on all photos, if you tap this ellipsis button up at the top, you can zoom in and out, but you can also do this by pinching and pushing on the screen like you would when zooming in or out on a photo. You can use the aspect button to view all photos in their true aspect ratio or view them as squares. You can apply a filter such as only showing your favorites, photos that you've edited, just photos or just videos. You can view your photos and videos on a map, which is pretty cool as you can zoom in and get quite granular with where certain photos were taken. And finally, you can choose whether you should show only your photos or photos that have been shared with you also. Select allows you to bulk select images like you would anything else on the iPhone and then either share them, delete them, that kind of thing. So the Photos app is great for sharing photos with your friends and family, but what if you start to really take your photos seriously and you want a way of sharing your creative journey with a much larger audience? You need a website and probably a custom domain, and you can get both at Squarespace who are sponsoring today's video. The entire process is easy with Squarespace. Start by checking to see if the domain that you want is available. Then with that sorted, start building your website. You can choose from loads of custom templates, and some of these photography portfolio sites look seriously stunning. Once you've picked the one that you like, you can edit it to perfectly suit your needs, and everything is as easy as double-click, drag and drop, absolutely no coding needed here. Squarespace even offer extra features, like the ability to create a blog, so you can keep people updated with what's going on in your life alongside your pictures, create a membership site to keep your fans happy, or even set up an e-commerce site where you can sell physical or digital products. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash properhonesttech to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain, or use the code properhonesttech. Your Photos app has a search function, and I think most people don't use this. I say this because whenever I see anyone trying to find a photo on their iPhone, they just kind of endlessly scroll through their Photos app looking for the one in question. You should try the search function, it's really very good, and uses machine learning to make it even better. But like all search functions, it's only good if you know what to search for, so let me show you. You can search for obvious things, like items that might be in the pictures that you're searching for, house, beach, ocean, etc. You can search for more generalist terms like food. In fact, if I input food, you can see that my iPhone has given me suggestions for food related terms that would return results because the number next to them indicates the number of results that the Photos app has found. 
you can search for periods in time. For example, if you search for the term one year ago, your phone will return results from a year ago within a few days. Always a fun way to be a bit nostalgic. You can search for people and you can search for geographical places. You can even search using multiple keywords at the same time if you know that you're looking for something really specific. You can add captions to photos and the reason that you might want to do this is to aid with searching. So the Photos app is able to search for a large number of things using machine learning. If I type in the word car or boat or dog or something like that, your phone is smart enough to be able to return results like this without you having to explain these items to your phone. But you can help this along by adding in your own captions. Let's say for example that you've taken a photo and you wish to add a hashtag that's searchable later, this would allow you to do just that. To add a caption, find the photo that you'd like to add a caption to and click on the info button. Then here where it says add a caption, you would add a caption. Your app has to index the captions, so you can't always search immediately, especially if you've added loads, but give it a few minutes and then try and you'll be able to search using captions. You can store your photos, videos and other media here in albums. To create one, click into the album section of photos, hit the plus button in the upper right and choose what you want to create. An album is a single collection of media. A folder is a folder which can then contain multiple albums. So if for example you had a trip but it was spread across four different locations, you could create an album for each location and store all four of those albums in a folder called My Trip or something like that. Annoyingly you can't add existing albums to a folder, you have to create a new album in the folder and manually move the photos to that folder, which is kind of dumb in my opinion, but there you go. If you use iCloud Photos, you can create shared albums, where you can store a collection of photos together in an album and then share that album with other people. Those other people can then of course view the photos and videos using their own device, but you can also do things like leave reactions and comments. To do this, first of all head to Albums, press the plus icon in the upper left and choose New Shared Album. You might need to switch this function on and you do that by going to settings, clicking on your name up at the top, choosing iCloud, then photos and ensuring that shared albums is toggled on. Give the new album a name, then choose next and then in the next tab add a contact or multiple contacts to the album, then choose create. That contact will get a notification with an option to join your album which they will have to accept. With the album now created, you can all begin adding content to it from your photo library. Tap into it, then tap the plus icon and select the items that you'd like to add. It's a bit odd this works as a post, whereby the people you share the album with will get a notification that you've posted new content to the album, so you can choose to add some information or a comment here at the same time if you wish, but you don't have to. Once you post, the photos will show right away in your version of the shared album, but it might take a while for them to show for other people as the cloud is doing its thing. But hopefully, a few minutes later, the other people in your album will be able to view what you've just added. If you really like a photo or video, or if it's something that you need access to often for whatever reason, you can favorite it, which puts it in its own dedicated favorites album. Doing this is really easy, just tap the little heart button at the bottom of the screen on any photo or video. Then underneath my albums, you'll have one called favorites, which contains anything that you favorited. This makes finding this content really quick and easy in the future, so great if you know there's certain images or videos that you always want to be able to come back to. If you head into albums and then scroll down a little, you can find a section called media types. Media Types is extremely useful as it applies filters to the content in your library, allowing you to quickly find media of a certain type without having to do anything more than click on a specific button. For example, if you know that you're looking for a video, tap into videos. If you know that you're looking for a selfie or a live photo, tap into that. You can see a count next to each category of how many items you have for each. Where I think this is really helpful is when we get to things like screen recordings or screenshots. How many times have you taken a screenshot of something that you wanted to show to someone else, only to then struggle to find it when you put under the pressure of being with that person? This makes it so much easier, as you can simply head into the screenshots album, removing much of the noise that makes it difficult to find that screenshot in the first place. Still in the album section and beneath the media type section, we've got utilities. In here, you can see your imports, hidden photos and recently deleted. 
Imports is either going to be something that you use heavily, like I do, or something that you don't really use at all. This is where your images that you've imported from another device are stored. For example, something that I do often is take photos on my Sony or Olympus cameras, then edit them in Lightroom on my computer and export them as JPEGs. I then drag all of those JPEGs from my computer into the Photos app. I do this for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I really like having all my photos in one place, with the exception of work-related photos. All of my personal photos live in the Photos app. And second, because I take advantage of iCloud, I've got loads of space where I can then store those large JPEGs in the cloud and can then access them from all of my Apple devices, including things like Apple TV. It also makes sharing photos much, much easier. Recently deleted is exactly what it sounds like and images stored in here will remain here for 30 days before they're automatically deleted properly from your device. This is worth remembering if you're deleting photos to try and make space on your device, that you'll need to delete them from both the main photos album and then again from deleted photos to fully remove them from your phone. Hidden photos is pretty useful, so useful in fact that I'll cover it in full in its own section. You can hide photos from your photo library, meaning that while they still exist on your device, they're not visible by you or anyone else browsing through your photo library. To do this, simply find a photo that you'd like to hide, tap the share button down in the bottom left, scroll down and choose hide. You'll have to confirm this again before it happens, but essentially your photo is now removed from your main library and placed instead in your hidden album. To view a hidden photo, go to Albums, scroll down to Utilities, head into the hidden album, and you can then view the images there. To unhide a photo, select it, press the share button down at the bottom left, and choose Unhide. Now, you might be wondering what the point is of a hidden album, which is so easily accessible, but there is a setting that you can tweak to make this less of an issue. Head into Settings, then Photos, and toggle Hidden Album Off. This basically hides the hidden album, giving you an extra layer of privacy for your hidden photos. Note that this does of course mean that if you decide that you'd like to access your hidden photos at a later point, you'll need to go into settings first and toggle it back on. You can edit your photos in the Photos app with a pretty astonishing level of control, but let me show you the basics of what you can do. From within a photo, choose Edit. The auto button will use AI to have a go at making improvements to your picture without you having to get too granular about it. And honestly, I think this is enough for most people. If you tap auto, you can then scroll to the right to see all the more minute changes that you can make that your phone has made for you. And you can of course tweak any that you like. Photo enthusiasts will probably hate the idea of people using an auto mode, but look, you've got the option of either using it, using it as a starting point or not using it at all. So to each their own. For each of these options, you're gonna first select it, then scroll using the scroll bar to apply more or less of that effect. Tap the three circles icon in the middle down here at the bottom, and these are your filters. Again, lots to choose from, and you can pick something that suits the mood you're going for in a particular picture. Finally, crop. You can make transformational changes to the image using these three buttons here. You can rotate the image using these buttons up at the top, and you can crop using this button up here at the top right. Auto is pretty good. It will use AI to apply an auto crop based on what your phone believes is the best look for your image. And again, you might hate or love this, but it is often pretty good. Finally, you can mark up the image using the pen icon. And from here, you've got all of the usual markup options like pens and pencils. When you're done, choose done and your changes will be applied. There's a great editing function for your live photos, which you might not be aware of. If I find a live photo within the edit menu, we've got all of the same editing options that we've got available for all other kinds of photos within the app. But with this being a live photo, there's an additional edit button up at the top left. A live photo is essentially a short video where your camera pulls a specific frame to act as the photo itself. But because of this, you can change how the live photo behaves. You can stick with the live photo or you can switch to a loop where the video will run on a loop. Bounce is probably better known as a boomerang where the video plays forwards and backwards. And finally, long exposure, which is awesome for photos like this, where I've got a shot of the waves coming in on the ocean. Continuing the live photo theme for a moment, we can set a live photo as our phone's wallpaper, which may not sound that exciting, but look what happens when we set a live photo as a wallpaper. 
with the phone locked, I can press and hold the screen to play the live photo. So if you've got a live photo that you really treasure, this is kind of a method of having it with you all the time, which I really like. To do this, find the live photo in your Photos app and press the share button down at the bottom left. Choose Users Wallpaper, ensure that Live Photo is on, then choose Set, and then choose Set Both. The Live Photo is now your wallpaper, which is going to look great whether it's static on your home screen or a video on your lock screen. If you're enjoying the content here, why not consider signing up to my newsletter, The Proper Weekly? I include some tech news, behind the scenes of what's happening here on the channel, and a tip for an item in the Apple ecosystem. I send it out each Friday, it's free to join, and I'll include a link to sign up in the description of this video. Memories are a fun feature within the Photos app where your phone will automatically take photos and videos that you've taken and bring them together into a collated memory linked to an event, person, place, or something else. Your phone will stitch them together in a stylish way and will set them to music, and they can really be pretty good fun. You can even share them with other people. You can even share them with people who don't have an iPhone, as the end result is a video that you can share like any other video. You'll find them in the Memories section of your For You tab. If you tap into one, it will immediately begin playing, but you can tap again to give you some options. You can pause using the play and pause button, and you can view the photos and videos included in the memory as a grid by pressing this button. Tap on an item to view it, or tap and hold to get more options, like sharing the individual item, making it the key photo for the memory, removing it from the memory, showing it in all photos, or deleting it. Tapping on the music button will actually give you access to some image options too. You can change the overall look of the memory using filters, but you can also change the music that's accompanying the memory. You can choose from music within the music app, so if you subscribe to it, you'll get customized suggestions. You can create your own memory, but to do this, you need to create an album, and this doesn't seem to work for shared albums, only ones that are solely yours. Within an album, tap the ellipsis menu, then choose play memory video. Finally, if you tap on the ellipsis menu of an actual memory, you can choose to delete it or have it feature less often, which is good if you've perhaps got a memory appearing that you don't want to delete, but perhaps don't want to be reminded of too frequently. If you're viewing a photo or a video, tap on the photo to bring up the on-screen options and press the I button down at the bottom. This will then give you information about the photo. Much of this is known as EXIF data or exchangeable image file data. It's things like the name of the image, the date and exact time that it was taken, the specific location where the image was taken, the device used to take the image, even down to the specific lens of the phone that's been used, the resolution, size, and other bits of key info. Wherever you see the word adjust, you can adjust the information up to and including removing the location from the image if you wish by tapping the adjust next to map and choosing no location. If you want to permanently set this, head into settings, privacy, location services, and switch precise location off within the camera option, as well as changing location access to never. You can use a tool called Visual Lookup to learn more about photos in your library. According to Apple's own support website, this only works in the US, but I can verify that this has been working for me here in the UK for a while now, and so I suspect this is something that Apple are rolling out on a country by country basis. Essentially, anytime that you see this little eye icon on a photo with the kind of sparkle effect, it indicates that visual lookup information is available for something within the photo. It could be that your phone recognizes a place or a piece of art or an item like a plant, flower or pet and can help you look up information about that thing or search for web images related to it. The live text function that was first debuted in iOS 15 works in photos. If you have a photo with text in it, tap and hold on the text to get the same cursor menu that you'd normally get in something like notes or mail. You can then select the text and from there you can copy and paste just like you would if this were a regular piece of computer text. So there you go, the Photos app explained. What about you? How do you use the Photos app? Any tips or hints that should have been included? Tell me about them in a comment. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.